Hi, everybody, and welcome back to our podcast from the Kama Sutra to 2020, where we look at your questions, your concerns, even your worries around all things to do with sex and sexuality. So unfortunately, we don't have Dr. Anvita Madan Behel again with us today due to medical reasons, but I have a very special guest with us on our podcast today. We have with us Habiba Kande. Habib is a writer. He's a sex educator. He's published six books. The books are generally uh, based on race, on sex, and African erotology. And African erotology, because although Habib has been born and brought up in the UK, his family traces back to Nigeria. But the one that I want to talk about today, the book that I want to speak about today, is the book that actually introduced me to Habib. It is a book called Kunyaza, The Secret of Female Pleasure. And in this book, Habib explores the concept of squirting. Habib, as I just said, you are the person who actually introduced me to a lot of the information on squirting, which I didn't know about till then. And I have a lot of questions for you on that today, because as you know, this is a platform where we respond to a lot of the queries, a lot of the concerns that people have around sexuality. But before we go there, I want you to explain to our audiences about Kunyaza, because when you told me what Kunyaza was, it just it blew me away because I didn't even know that the, um, the African nations had this ancient tradition of female pleasure. So can you tell us a little bit more about Kunyaza, please? Sure, sure. So Kunyaza is an ancient African practice which originated in Rwanda in East Central Africa. And it's in also Rwanda, practiced- In Rwanda, did you say? In Rwanda, that's correct, in East Central Africa. And it's also practiced in neighboring countries such as Kenya, Burundi, um, Uganda, and even as far as um, Nigeria and Ghana, where I'm originally from. Um, I mean, in those neighboring countries, it's known as Kachabali instead of Kunyaza, but it's both the same thing. And the practice itself, it involves, um, it, it's a heterosexual practice where the man uses his manhood to um, tap, stroke, and rub the woman's flower in certain rhythmic um, patterns um, for a period of time in order to um, trigger um, female ejaculation, also known as squirting, or what people in Rwanda not call as the sacred water. Now the practice itself, it's not just once the man does the tapping, then the woman's going to gush fluid. She obviously, he needs to make sure that the woman is mentally and psychologically prepared to engage in kunyaza, and the woman herself needs to give herself permission to experience the joys of, of kunyaza. And what I was fascinated when I first came across this tradition a few years ago was that like similar to what you said, um, Seema, that I wasn't aware, although I'm originally from West Africa, that there was this ancient African tradition which celebrates female pleasure, that, that venerates women's um, right to sexual fulfillment, and also which places the emphasis on the man to ensure that he finds the water, that he enables or he allows um, his female partner to, in, order to, in order for her to squirt or ejaculate. So for me, I was really fascinated by it because, again, this was a pleasure positive and female orientated practice where a lot of the focus was placed on making sure that the woman experiences the joys of kunyaza. Whilst you hear a lot about um, squirting nowadays, it wasn't seen as something that was taboo and it wasn't even seen as something that was vulgar or anything like that. It was a, it was a celebrated practice that um, elderly women in the in African communities known as sengas, they would teach young girls and young, and young women prior to marriage about the rights of kunyaza, and also there'll be uncles known as kodjas who will teach the young men and 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 elder and, and boys about how they should pleasure their wives in marriage, and also they should be empathised with them, and also not rush them. And I think one of the things, what again, which fascinated me about kunyaza was not just the practice itself, because it's it's primarily a non-penetrative practice, and the emphasis is on the man, like I said, to use his manhood to stimulate the woman's um, genitalia and focusing on the clitoris, which they, which Rwanda is called the, the bean or the magic bean. And we know with modern science that there's many studies that, that speak about the importance of clitoral stimulation in order for a woman to experience an orgasm. So for me, it was mind blowing that there was this ancient practice in Africa that's been practiced for hundreds of years, which focuses on penetra non-penetrative pleasure and it focuses on women's pleasure, which is obviously the most important thing in order for a woman to experience an orgasm or squirting. 
You know, Habib, what comes to mind immediately, two things. One is that when you think of Rwanda, in recent years, the Rwandan history um, has been such that you never ever connected to the idea of female pleasure. Um, you know, it's just how it is. And secondly, what I think is so sad that we are so aware of all the cultures that have talked about repression. I mean, we can name who says it's a guilt, who said it was sinful, who said it was bad. We can say which culture and in what century decided this, but we don't know anything about the cultures that talked about pleasure. How sad is that? Where did we lose this idea of female pleasure, uh, you know, as we kind of evolved? Yeah, that's something that still um, mystifies me because I, I agree with you wholeheartedly that, especially in the African continent, if I were to ask people, what do they think about when they hear about African sexuality? First thing that will come to many people's mind or female sexuality is female genital mutilation, women being um, oppressed and things like that. But you've got this practice, and don't get me wrong, unfortunately, these practices do happen in some parts of Africa, but we don't hear about the female pe um, pleasure positive or the pleasure orientated practices where women are celebrated and women's um, sexuality is liberated. So and Rwanda is an example where, for a number of reasons, some people say because of um, the influence of colonization by the Europeans, because Rwanda, although it's been, it was, it's been practiced for hundreds of years, following the colonization of Rwanda by Europeans, the practice was suppressed and it was only practiced in villages. So a lot of people, as they became educated, they kind of saw this as this is like a practice which is not something that a refined man or woman would engage in because the Europeans at that, at that time, the Christian Europeans considered it to be barbaric. So it's something that even amongst modern Rwandans today, it's not something that is popularly known. It's like you need to go to some of the rural villages or speak to people that know about their tradition to kind of understand about this beautiful practice. And it was something that I, again, even when I was researching it and studying it, it was quite difficult to find the sengas or the female sex educators who teach it because it is known to be a secret practice. And as I mentioned earlier, it's known as the African secret to female pleasure. And one of the things that a number of Rwandan sex educators or sengas told me was that they were worried that they didn't they were worried that they didn't want me to abuse the practice as in it's not just about squirting that's not the goal the goal is a woman's pleasure if she is able to enjoy that experience pleasure by way of squirting or orgasm then that's great or even if she can experience pleasure without experiencing squirting or orgasm via kunyaza that's fine but it's important to understand the sacred of sex and sensuality in their cultures so that's why i wanted in, in in writing a book not only to talk about the technique itself and the history of squirting, but also the importance of the man understanding the importance of making sure the woman feels at ease and relaxed to enjoy the pleasures of Kunyada. So it's not just about, you know, it's like a checklist. If you do A and B, see what happens. It doesn't work like that. You need to obviously make sure that you're obviously in a loving relationship and obviously the woman is in a loving state of mind to really experience the joys of Kunyada. So the ethics. So that's of interesting. Uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Go on, finish. No, so I just want to say the ethics of sex, that was also what I wanted to kind of emphasize in, in, in the book and the tradition. Yeah, I think uh, the ethics of sex is such a good um, and such a useful term because that's really important. So you, you said that um, the goal in kunyaza is not squirting. So we shouldn't sort of say this equals this, that um, kunyaza equals squirting. It's not that. No, it's, it's not that. So kunyaza itself refers to the practice of the man using his manhood to stimulate the clitoris and labia minor and labia majora in a tapping function. Whereas kunyara is what is, not, is that's the word used for the ejaculate fluid or the squirting. So if you do kunyaza, you're likely, the woman is likely to experience kunyara, but kunyaza itself, the practice is about women's pleasure. Now, again, like I said, like in Rwanda, for example, there's some studies that say up to 80% of women are able to experience squirting via kunyaza. And there are a number of reasons why, um, why maybe is it that women in, in parts of Rwanda are able to squirt more than women in other parts of the world. Like in, there was a Western study that said that 54% of women um, in the West are able to squirt. Now, one of the reasons why, unfortunately, maybe a number of women, particularly in the West, aren't able to experience kunyaza, I mean, um, squirting, is because a number of women hold themselves back. As in, because they've been told that maybe this is, is urination, or because of they, they might they might fear that they're going to be slut shamed and because sometimes there's a lot of aversion towards um female fluid there's a number of women even when they're in the bedroom they don't allow themselves to fully let go and experience um squirting because 
they hold themselves back because of again maybe what they've been told or what they've been conditioned to believe about squirting. So, but in in like I said in Rwanda, it's quite popular. It's common for women to squirt. Whereas nowadays the practice is actually dying out because a number of people have been influenced by Western understandings about sex and sexuality, which um, funny enough, a lot of people in the West are now trying to go back to not necessarily the Kunyaza tradition, but the squirting tradition, which is quite interesting. So um, it's it's interesting that you say about, you know, how it's uh, it's all to do with the mind, isn't it? Because the Kama Sutra says that. It actually says that it is very much about opening up those little channels in your mind which say that you are worthy of pleasure you are entitled to pleasure and you will open up your body for pleasure and that's when things begin to happen 100 percent, and i love that and i love what you said about you are worthy and you are entitled to pleasure and i think especially in the case of many women i don't think many women feel that they're entitled to pleasure and that's something which drew me to the kinyasa culture and tradition was that it was a uh, practice that was telling women that they are entitled to pleasure because I think with a lot of men generally we have this bravado and ego that we believe that we're entitled to pleasure from it's like our birthright whereas unfortunately a number of women are led to believe um, that sex and pleasure is for the man and they're there to serve him whereas in the kunyaza tradition is that no the man is there to serve his wife or his female partner so much so that if he's unable to find the water and I make her squirt he is considered to be less of a man so the pressure is actually placed on the man as opposed to pressure placed on the women that on the woman that she needs to squirt. So for me, it was again because it's the opposite of what I've been brought up and heard about in the West, it was quite refreshing to hear that yes, women are not only entitled to pleasure, but the onus is on the man to make sure that his female partner feels um open and vulnerable and trusting enough with him that she can experience the joys of Kunyasa rather than it's an act that he makes her squirt. It's not a case of him making her squirt. It's a case of a woman experiencing kunyara or squirting in his presence. I think that, again, is an excellent point. It brings me very, very neatly to my next point, because a lot of people have been writing in, asking questions about squirting and wanting to know, um, <clears throat> I guess, the techniques, etc. But they all write in and say, how do I make her squirt? And you've just said that that's not the mindset that we go in with, because we're not looking for, I think the term that you used was sexual applause. Yes, yes. So I think for a number of men in particular, why I think a number of men, especially in the Western, outside of maybe Rwanda, are fascinated by Kunyaza, or squirting, sorry, is that it's this idea that I can make her squirt, and it's a form of sexual applause, as in yes. it's a tap on the back. It's, it's something that I've done. And I think with a lot of men, I think, because we know that you know a lot of women um, fake orgasms and there's no way of knowing exactly if a woman um, has actually climaxed or not, for a number of men, they look at squirting as this is something that, this is like an achievement. It's a sexual achievement. It's a sexual applause. It's something that validates my manhood. And that's it's like a trophy. That, it's a trophy. And it shouldn't be like that. And unfortunately, even it's, there's a lot of pressure placed on women, unfortunately, where some women feel that if they don't squirt, they haven't experienced the height of sexual fulfillment or sexual pleasure. And that's not the case. I'm not saying that squirting is the highest um, form of pleasure that a woman can experience. That's not the case. It's just one form of pleasure amongst many that a woman's able to experience. So it's not, although I'm promoting kunyaza and squirting, I want to demystify and take away the stigma from squirting. But it's important to not put undue pressure on people where they feel that in, in, every, in each and every sexual encounter, they need to experience squirting and even an orgasm. Yes, absolutely. Because I think that people have enough dysfunctionality in their sex lives and already orgasms are really, really hard to come by. And I think that we don't want to put extra pressure on them. But I think that this is a fabulous subject to explore because it's come into the, um, to the global mindset in recent times through pornography. So people can see it and it's generally put forward as this amazing orgasmic experience when you watch it on porn. Uh, but unfortunately, there's nothing about the techniques or how it's supposed to happen or what it's supposed to make you feel, etc. And I think that's what I'd like to explore with you today, if that's okay with you. That's fine. Great. So there's been a few little average kind of questions, which um, before we come to the technique, we'd I'd like to... Um, sort of bring forward so a few people have written in to ask that is it harmful in any way if a woman squirts 
No, it's not harmful in any way. It's not harmful for the woman and it's not harmful for the man. So Excellent. It's not. Um, what about the smell? Now, a lot of people are wondering whether is it, does it smell? Is there something that's sort of dirty about the fluid? A lot of others have written in and said that um, their partner, they do manage to get their partner to squirt, but they like to drink the squirt. So is that bad for them? So in regards to the fluid, I probably should um, explain the different types of squirting or, um, or ejaculate fluid that women generally experience. There's one which is um, which, what is known as true ejaculate, which is um, it's not normally that it's quite thick. And um, in terms of the color, it's like musty and, and it's not transparent. And then you've got squirting, which is considered to be um, large expulsions of female ejaculate, and that's uh, more fluid, watery-like, and, and transparent. In terms of the smell, and obviously then obviously urine, urine is totally different because obviously that's generally uh, a yellow tinge and it's, and it's got an odor, whereas both female ejaculate and squirting or the large expulsion of fluid is both considered to be odorless. So there, sh there should have been generally no odor um, or no smell with, with the two, um, whether the female ejaculate or the squirting fluid. Now, in terms of the taste, I've not come across anything in my studies which suggests that um, it's harmful. Um, that's again, I'm speaking about female ejaculate and um, the squirting fluid. Now, urine itself, I'm, I'm not saying that's advisable for someone to um, to drink, but in terms of female ejaculate itself and squirting fluid, from my understanding, it's not harmful. I'm not a medical doctor, but from my understanding, it's not harmful for someone to drink. And um, yeah, so that's what I understand. That's fine. Um, one last question, which was um, somebody had actually written in, a young lady actually, and said, is this going to stain her sheets permanently? No, it won't stain your sheets. It might bless your sheets, I will say. That's <laughs> a I mean nice one. That, I like that. It'll bless yeah, your sheets. I, it will bless your sheets. I think we need to get away from, and I'll, I'll pose the, a question while answering um, the lady's question is that, does she think that when the man ejaculates it stains the sheets generally probably not you can wash it away that attitude when we're speaking about women's fluid so okay. that's why i think we need to shift this mindset that anything that comes from the woman is seen to be impure or dirty unless it's a baby whereas anything that comes from the man is kind of seen as fine whether it's by way of oral sex whether it's by way of fluid on the bedsheets and things like that so it doesn't it won't stain the bed sheets it might bless the bed sheets and even in parts of Rwanda and um, Kenya, where Kunyaza is commonly practiced, there are known to be like secret mattresses or that, that people make for, for, because there's some women who are, who are blessed enough to expel large quantities of fluid. There are some that only expel sh sh um, small amounts. And the women obviously that are blessed enough to expel large quantities, they have these special mattresses just so that the mattress itself won't be too blessed by her fluid, shall I say. So it's got like a covering on it so that it it's won't got soak in. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Great. So I guess that's one good thing. Um, it's a good thing to sort of suggest that if you're worried, then put something on your mattress to actually protect it. Exactly. So um, I remember the first time that we met and you told me about um, Kunyaza and you told me about squirting. You told me two things. You told me a little story that comes behind it. So there's a little myth that ha that's attached to this um, particular um, act. And then you talked a little bit about the technique. So do you want to tell us the story first? Sure. So I would so I would have told the story, but I love the way you tell the story because it's <laughs> magnificent. Obviously, you're a professional storyteller. But um, so in a nutshell, um, according to Rwandan folklore, there was an ancient queen going back hundreds of years ago who was yearning and waiting for her husband who was, who was away on a military expedition, her husband obviously being the king. And while she was um, waiting for her husband, um, she was in need for attention. So she called one of her guards, she summoned one of her guards to make love to her. Now the guard as he came, obviously he was worried because she, he knew what she wanted. And obviously he was fearful of the repercussions if the king were to find out. And then she said that if you don't make love to me, I'm going to get you uh, have you executed. And then the, as a guard made his way towards um, the queen, he started to, he held his manhood in his hand and he started to tremble because obviously he was worried. And as he came near her, again, this is what the story says, as he came near her, he started to tremble his manhood against her, her genitalia, her, her female flower. And that um, elicited a gush of fluid to emanate from her loins. And from there, 
Lake Kivu is a great lake in East Central Africa was 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 allegedly built from this from the gushes of a fluid and that was known as the beginning of the Kunyasa tradition. That when the king came back, obviously the guard had left by that time, and the queen told the, um, her husband, "This is now how I want you to um, satisfy me, make love to me before you enter me." So that's where the whole Kunyasa tradition is it's said to have been. Um, has have started from and since then it's been passed down from generation to generation from women teaching other women about not only the story behind um, um, this sacred practice but how that they should teach that their, their male partners to satisfy them in the bedroom. I think um, I absolutely love this story. We have a similar kind of practice in um, in some of our ancient traditions from India where the idea of tapping against the yoni, the vagina, uh, it, and, and, you know, sort of basically maybe even gently stimulating the clitoris with a little bit of tapping brings the woman to a great deal of pleasure. So I think that it's really interesting that this is based on the same kind of act that, you know, it's it's that he, the, the guard is trembling so much and he's holding his, his phallus in his hand and he's so frightened and he's trembling and it's knocking against her rather than being able to penetrate her. And that knocking arouses her so much. So, okay, I love that story. I just think it's great fun. Now, um, there's obviously more to bringing a woman to squirt than merely tapping against her. Now, are there a few techniques that you might have come across in your research and your, um, your sort of finding out about this? Yeah, sure. So in terms of, there are many ways to bring a woman to, to, to climax or for a woman to experience climax with a male partner. Now, with the kunyasa even technique itself, um, it's, it's adapted and evolved over time. So now it's not just a tapping technique, it's a, that's known as a simple kunyasa technique or practice. There's the um, advanced or more complicated practice, which is, consists of both the tapping of the external genitalia, and then the advanced practice of kunyasa involves not only the tapping, the, but also involves the deep thrusting. So it's a combination of penetrative intercourse as well as the um, external tapping. Now, with the penetrative intercourse, that can be done by way of the male penis or it can be done by way of the fingers. So obviously the man can use his fingers to stimulate the, um, the inner vulval area and obviously the infamous G-spot. So these are, and again, it's, it's for the couple to see what works with them. And, and that's why even in, the, in my book, I laid out the different examples. So obviously there are some women who can experience an orgasm or squirting just by way of the tapping technique. Some require G-spot stimulation, some require a combination of G-spot stimulation and oral stimulation and penetrative intercourse. So again, it's that there's a range of practices that obviously a woman can experience with her partner, but it's for the, for the partner to couple to find out which what works best for them. But basically, it is uh, more dependent on tapping from the outside or just tapping yes. just between the lips, just it's, inside it's more, of the lips. It's more, it's more dependent on tapping the clitoris, what's known as, well, the clitoral gland, sh shall I say, because as we know that the clitoris itself extends far deeper into the woman's um, genitalia. So the, m most of the clitoris actually sits inside the woman instead of the outer clitoris, what, what we kind of know as a clitoris. So the tapping of the clitoral glands, that's initially done with the knocking technique. And then what the man would do is then he would rub the labia minora and labia majora and he'll press against that with his with, his, with the penis glands. Now, the reason for doing that is because he's also, when he's tapping against the labia minora, he's also stimulating the inner clitoris, the clitoral legs, which many people are not really aware of. So the, 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 in, in, in essence, kunyaza is stimulation of what I call the K-spot. Because when we're speaking about the K-spot, the K-spot I'm referring to is the whole clitoris. So it's not just the clitoral glands, it's also the clitoral legs and the bulge which sits inside it. So um, inside the vulva, sorry. So when the man, again, he is practicing kunyaza, he's finding which, what, what part of the clitoris stimulates the woman more than the other. Because there are some women who experience extreme delight by tapping the clitoral, by receiving stimulation of the clitoral gland, glands. Some women, it's the, um, what do they call it? It's the two o'clock spots. So if you can imagine a clock, two o'clock, so the top right hand, right side quadrant is seen as the most sensitive area for some women. It's the left leg. So every woman is different. The same way there are some women who are able to experience an orgasm by simulating the, what they call as the um, venous mounds, which is the two indented, um, indented, uh, indented spaces at the lower back. 
So every woman is different. So different women have obviously different erogenous zones, but in terms of the Kunyaza technique, whilst he's performing it, although he might concentrate on the clitoral glands initially, then he should move to stimulate the labia minora and majora. And even if the woman experiences most pleasure and joy from stimulating the clitoral glands, by him then starting to stimulate other parts of her, um, her genitalia, he'll increase anticipation. So the whole idea is not just to concentrate on like, you, you have to play with it and tease her. So even when the sangha speak about how a man should um, be with his wife, the whole idea is to tease, to tease her. So once you find out what really turns it on, then you play with that the area a little bit, then you leave it. And then that will build up, that will increase arousal. And then you go back to it and heighten um, the excitement. So I think two points over here that you made, um, which I just want to clarify. I like the idea that if you find something that really excites her, you go to it, you tease it, then you leave it and come away and then go back to it. Because if you, you go keep back. going on and on, then it just becomes stale. Exactly. So, so you leave it, you come back to it. And the other thing you said, the two o'clock spot makes it her left leg. No, so the, yeah, the two o'clock spot is the left side of her head, of the clitoral gland. So you, uh, I had a, so you've got the, I could try and um, I actually, actually have a model of a clitoris, but I don't know where it is with me. But if you can imagine, these are the legs. I don't know if you mm -hmm. can see this. And, and at the top, I actually remember I use my fingers. These are the legs, and at the top here is the clitoral glands. The left side here, for some women, is seen as the most sensitive area. Okay, so the left to the left of the clitoris. Of the clitoris, you yeah, have the clitoral glands, so the round. Uh, and then for some women, it, it's 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 the left leg, and that's obviously pressing against the labia um, minora. And then for some women, it's the um, G spot. Now, the actual G spot in and of itself, which we know is actually part of the clitoris, but it's part of the inner clitoris. So when people and a number of women who experience heightened pleasure by um, when the G spot is stimulated, that's really stimulating the inner clitoris, just be just behind the clitoral gland, which is known as the clitoral head. Okay, I think that's it's a, pretty it's, interesting. It's a, it's, a, it's a lot, but I think the whole idea, and even with the Kunyaza practice, because it's non-penetrative, well, at least a simple practice. The idea is for the man with obviously his, 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 his lady to explore her body where she's at ease, but he's taking the time to fully understand what turns on. With penetrative intercourse, the, the issue is that a lot of men are in control and aren't able to know what actually she enjoys. And it's very difficult for the penis itself when it's in the vagina to know what are the most enjoyable areas, so to speak. And a lot of men will just concentrate on how fast and how hard they are. Whereas with Kunyaza, he can obviously, when he's doing the tapping or knocking technique, he can do it in a slow rhythmic fashion. He can do it hard, he can do it fast. So there's different ways he can play with her. And he's also gonna experience some um, pleasure as well because when he's using the clitoral glands, we know that's the most sensitive area of the penis. So, and, and, and the reason why I think some men prefer kunyaza over oral stimulation is that with oral sex, unless you're someone who in, received, enjoys making your partner feel pleasure, some men feel bored when they're giving their wife when they're performing the cunnilingus because they're not really experiencing much joy themselves with their tongue. Whereas with kunyaza, you're feeling the titillation sensations. And it's also helping you to delay ejaculation and make sure you're in control of not only yourself, but obviously making sure that she's in, you're in control of her pleasure. So it's quite, it's like, it's like an, it's an adult game. It's a, and it's a win-win because like you said, that if you're actually doing it with your fingers, you're able to see how much pleasure she's getting. You're able to give her more pleasure and you're able to control your own um, ejaculation for longer. Yeah, exactly. Oh, brilliant. And um, did I hear at one point you saying or somebody else saying that there are also certain breathing techniques that women can use to bring themselves to pleasure? Yeah, so that's something that I've heard from a number of modern singers that they were, they were, um, they've made use of some modern breathing techniques that they've learned from different parts of the world and they've brought that into the kunyaza tradition so before the man even engages in kunyaza they encourage the couples to sit in front of each other and i think they was it known as eye gazing or soul gazing and just attentively pay attention to without performing any any physical touch just before, um, paying attention to um, their both of their responses and then just engage in some deep breathing exercises so both at ease both the man and the woman the man so he doesn't he's not eager he, especially even if he's really aroused he can lower his arousal and then also for the woman so she can be in a more loving and relaxed state of mind so i think it's beneficial both on the man's part on the on the, on the woman's part for the man 
who's generally maybe at very hot to cool him down and maybe where the woman where she's not she's quite cool to kind of warm her up so that's the whole idea of like the breathing exercise and hopefully so they can become in sync with one another before they engage in kunyata or any form of sexual encounter yeah because like the kama sutra says that men and women our sexuality is so different that if it is not helped with all these different types of exercises it can never be synced it'll never come to the same point so these things are extremely important for us 100% i think sexual compatibility and that's one thing i did love about not only about the kama sutra but i love the way you and i have got your signed copy i've seen i've read it about four times of your book is that the importance of understanding sexual compatibility and it's not and sex shouldn't be like a race that i'm supposed to achieve this it's all about understanding and coming together and and, and enjoying it to each other in harmony and that's something which i think a lot of the ancients realized and understood more than maybe maybe because they had more time on their on their hands or they they had more time to understand each other and that's why when we're speaking about practice like kunyas and other ancient techniques because i think in the west we're very goal oriented or modern people it's not only in the west we're very goal orientated we want to know if i do this it's going to get me this give me this result it's not about that it's about giving you a guide of different techniques and exercises for you to understand and incorporate into your love life with your partner so that's why it's very difficult when someone asks me okay if i do this is this going to happen it's like i it's, it doesn't work like that, but you can give some of the tools and they can understand, okay, this works best for me. So it's about empowering people with appropriate um, sexual knowledge. I'm going to use your word, Habib. If there were three tools that you were going to give to a young man to get him started on this journey of squirting, on the journey of pleasuring his partner, what would those three things be? What would the advice that you would give them? My first piece of advice is to adopt um, a pleasure oriented mindset where he understands that she comes first. So it's always important that he's prioritizing her pleasure over his. The second is go easy and be patient. So as long as he understands that, so he's not responding to his desires, he's responding to hers. So he's making sure again, so similar to the first, but he's making sure he's, go, he's always taking time I think that's a lot of men we kind of rush. That would be the second piece of advice. The third, I would shamelessly plug my book and I'll say, buy my book, Kunyasa, The Secret to Female Pleasure. <laughs> Absolutely, so a, why not? Yeah. <laughs> so that's a free, that's a free. But on the on the serious side, the first, the first is arguably the most important, I think, to adopt a pleasure orientated mindset where he, he's putting his female partner's pleasure above his. I think that's the most important thing. And I said female pleasure above his rather than female orgasm because again if he's thinking about female orgasm then he'll be in a rush and he'll be keep asking her have you come yet have you climaxed yet and it's not about that whereas if he wants to make sure she is satisfied and she enjoys herself in the bedroom whatever however that manifests itself that's the most important thing so rather than thinking about squirting orgasm or time or how many fuss or how many sex positions you're going to do if he has a pleasure orientated mindset where he's placing her pleasure above his I think he's that's the most important thing and then secondly which is similar to the first but it's making sure he's go easy and relax always take your time so again with a lot of men I think we're always in a haste and we're always rushing to make sure you're always taking your time and making sure you're attentive to her needs and then the third obviously I would say if you want more information you can buy my book <laughs> Excellent. And um, if you were going to give the same piece of advice to women, because I, I always find that, you know, when people say to me, what is the advice? How would you start us off? What do you say to women to say, OK, you can walk down the path of pleasure? And the first thing I always say to women is give yourself the permission to feel pleasure to begin with. And secondly, that, you know, just you have to be responsible for your own pleasure, because if you have decided that you are worthy, that you're going to have it, that you are worthy of it, you will walk down the path of pleasure. But if you've got your mind closed off, then your partner certainly can't do it for you. So when it comes to actually techniques, now we're talking about techniques. Um, and if you're going to say to women that you could actually give yourself the pleasure of squirting, what would your advice to them be? It will be similar to what you said about first and foremost, give yourself permission to experience pleasure. And with kunyasa or, or squirting, how you're going to give yourself, don't be afraid to let go. 
don't hold back, don't be afraid to, because I think a number of women who said, who've experienced um, squirting, they say just before they squirt, it feels like the, the feeling is similar to u- urinating. So I'm sure there's a lot of women, and I'm sure a number of men who are listening to this, who, who they've been in relationships with a woman that a number of women say, oh, hold on, wait, I need to use the bathroom. And it might be that she wants to squirt, but she's not able to differentiate between the two. So I would say it's important that obviously, like you said, make sure she gives herself permission to experience pleasure and squirting and don't be afraid to let go. I think that's very important. Don't hold back because as men, not only do we not, we're not afraid to let go, we push out, we release. And I think that's something that a number of women don't really do. And I think that's why I think it's important that you need to, you need to kind of let, let go in again and take ownership of your pleasure and take ownership of your squirting or take ownership of your orgasm don't look at it like it's the man's responsibility to make me orgasm you're you're not a passive recipient in this encounter it's something that you both should be mutually enjoying together but ultimately you should take ownership as in when you're experiencing pleasure if you're feeling that you might squirt or orgasm push out and let it go it might need a bit of a, a, a nudge so definitely i would definitely say don't be afraid to let go so um it can women also bring themselves to that point where they can squirt i mean can they self pleasure to that point yes it's possible it's there it's definitely possible for women by way of um uh, masturbation self pleasure however you want to call it can bring herself to both squirting and orgasm and there are a number of women especially a number of studies in the west which say that most women um, most women are able to squirt by themselves than with a male partner the same way a lot of women are able to climax by themselves than with a male partner. One of the reasons is, is because they're able to, they're not worried about the reaction of their partner that maybe he might judge her and things like that. So the reason why a lot of women are able to climax by themselves is because they're in tune with their body. They're able to get out of, they're more likely to be able to get out of their out of their head and into their body and relax. Whereas when they're with a partner, maybe they're thinking about what their partner's going to think and things like that. So the same, this, obviously you won't have a penis, but you can use your fingers, to um, stimulate yourself to bring, and obviously a woman will know her body and what. So I wouldn't say to a woman, use the um, upper quadrant method because she might, for her, it might be the lower quadrant method. It might be the tapping technique. It might be G-spot stimulation, which is most arousing and most pleasing to her. So by, by first, like you mentioned, giving herself permission to experience pleasure, she can find different ways of exploring, um, squirting, but she has to be able to let go. And I think maybe a woman, are able to do that by themselves more than with um, a male partner. And tell me something, is there lubrication needed for this particular technique or this act? Is it important? Because in a lot of other sexual acts, we recommend that women use lubrication even if they are getting wet um, on their own, but still, we still recommend that they use that as an extra thing to help them along. Is that necessary in um, in this as well? Well, for the advanced kudyaza technique, yes, because that involves the thrusting and non penetration. Yeah. yeah, that involves penetration. Whereas the actual simple kudyaza technique, it doesn't need lubrication, but it doesn't mean that lubrication won't help. And one okay. of the reasons why, again, it depends from person to person. One of the reasons why um, sometimes lubrication, some couples prefer not to use lubrication with the simple kudyaza technique, is because it allows, in some cases, it allows when the, when the woman is not um, lubricated or she's fully lubricated with using um, external fluids, the man can see, he's, he's able to pay more attention to the woman. And sometimes what happens, and I'm sure some of the men who listen probably will, c- could testify to this, sometimes when you, either you're doing manual stimulation or using or orally, or even using kunyasa, when it's very wet, especially the um, external surface, it's kind of slippery for you, you can't concentrate. So sometimes it, it's uh, it's easier when there's no lubrication, but at the same time, again, it's not to say that it's, you shouldn't use it, it whatever works for the, for, for the couple. So if it does help them by all means, you should use some lubrication. And just before we close this conversation off, which has been absolutely fascinating, is there one last thing that you'd like to say? Um, yeah, I, I think, I, I love what you said about give yourself permission to pleasure I think that's because the book although it's for couples it's geared towards women and I think it's important if I was going to leave with anything is what you said about give yourself permission to pleasure to experience pleasure and to try and adopt a pleasure orientated mindset I think that's the most important thing I think if both the man a woman can do that and understand and appreciate that women should come first or their pleasure should be should you should prioritize women female pleasure above 
Now, pleasure. I think you're on to a winning run and, run, and then you probably will be able to experience the joys of Kunyaza. But don't be afraid to let go and enjoy, enjoy Kunyaza and squirting. And it's not urine, I would say that. <laughs> Excellent. You know, I'm hoping that this is going to... Um, this is going to clear up a lot of the doubts and the questions that people have had about squirting. Like I said, it's the new kid on the block because of pornography, but I really hope that this makes them understand how it was really about, um, about pleasure, about female pleasure. And it is such an ancient technique that it should actually be revered as such it should be venerated almost as a pleasure technique and not just used as um something that you watched on um some kind of porn and you think that you can kind of plow through it in in some ridiculous way so i just hope that this is going to change a few mindsets and i hope that it's going to bring a lot more pleasure to a lot more people okay so for everybody out there if you've been listening i, I hope that this makes you more comfortable about trying it and I certainly wish you a lot of happiness in the next few winter months with this new act that you might be able to get a lot of pleasure from. So as always on the video, do like, comment, subscribe. If you have any other questions, send them in to info.seema.anand at gmail.com. If you need to get in touch with Dr. Anvita Madan Behel, she is on anvitamadanbehel.com. If you need to get in touch with Habib about any more questions on squirting or kunyaza, Habib is available on Instagram. He is uh, Habib, H-A-B-E-E-B -E -E underscore a-K-A-N-D-E. And of course, his book, Kunyaza, The Secrets to Female Pleasure is available on Amazon. Happy reading if you manage to get that book. And we will see you here next week.